Good morning, everyone. So let's continue our session in language and linguistics. Today we are going to discuss about allomorphs. So so far we have seen how words are made up of morphemes. That is the structure of words in terms of morphemes. So what's a morpheme? A morpheme may be defined as the meaningful unit in the structure of a language, right? So in this example. Consider the word "sing." So, "sing" is a morpheme, but "singing" is not a morpheme. It contains two units, that is, "sing" and "ing." It consists of two morphemes. So, "ing" has a grammatical function that it indicates the action is in progress. So, some morphemes. have only a single form in all contexts likewise the ing so under example singing going crying laughing etc there's no change in their structure as well as in their pronunciation as well as in the meaning but some morphemes are realized in variant forms for example the plural morpheme s or es in spelling has three different phonetic realizations they are s z and is so see the examples given here pet pets leg legs glass glasses so as seen from these examples the plural morpheme that is in spelling s or es they are realized as s in pets z in legs and is in glasses so these are called the allomorphs of the plural morpheme so what's an allomorph an allomorph may be defined as a variant concrete realization of a morpheme which occurs in certain definable environments so when a morpheme is thus represented sometimes by one phonetic shape and sometimes by another we say that this morpheme stands in alternation with each other so these each of these representations is a morph and all the morphs which represent particular morpheme are called allomorphs of that morpheme so here we have seen the allomorphs of the plural morpheme i have given the examples or the particular environment or the particular rules regarding the use of these allomorphs so the plural morpheme is realized as s if the preceding sound is a voiceless consonant other than s sh or ch i hope you do remember the phonetic symbols of sh and ch sh or ch sh as in sheep ch as in chin okay so the plural morpheme is pronounced as s if the preceding sound is a voiceless consonant see the example steps step steps set sets there the preceding sound is p in steps t in sets now the second realization that is z if the preceding sound is a voiced one that is either a vowel or a voiced consonant i hope you do remember that uh, we learned uh, consonant sounds in your first ug uh p b t d k g 
so in that one p is voiceless b is voiced one t is voiceless d is voiced one k is voiceless g is voiced likewise if you are using the preceding sound is the voiced consonant or vowel sound the plural morpheme will be pronounced as z so it's z if the preceding sound is a voiced one other than z r and j i hope you remember j and j so the example b is preceded by the vowel e legs preceded by the voice consonant g now the third one is realized as is plural morpheme is realized as is when preceded by s z ch j sh or r okay it's when the sound is preceded by s z ch j sh or r and which we have already left in the other parts s is pronounced with the preceding voiceless consonant other than s sh and ch z if the preceding sound is a voiced one other than z j or j so is comes after the sounds s z ch j sh or r so the examples glasses since is preceded by the sound s versus as is preceded by z and also the vowel a now there is another alternant or another allomorph that is words like sheep and deer they have the same forms as plural and singular so without any marker for the plural so that plural morpheme has no separate phonetic realization and it is called zero allomorph please mark that and the symbol is not the one in the uh, printed one uh, you should show the symbol shown here in the picture it's a plural morpheme so there are three realization as for the phonetic symbols s z and is and the last one that is the zero allomorph when words like sheep deer and when they have no another form of uh, plural the same word is used for as singular and plural so the plural morpheme has no separate phonetic realization then it's zero allomorph so the plural morpheme has four variants four allomorphs they are s z is and zero allomorph see that symbol now another example of allomorphic variation in english is the past tense morpheme represented by the spelling d or ed in the case of regular morphemes of course in the case of regular morphemes we don't have to worry about the pronunciation the past tense morpheme is realized as t when preceded by a voiceless sound other than t okay so the past tense morpheme is realized as t when preceded by a voiceless sound other than t for example kick kicked laugh laughed 
okay as is preceded by the voiceless sound k and the voiceless sound f now the next one is realized as the past tense morpheme is realized as d when preceded by a voiced sound other than d beg begged dream dreamed so is preceded by the voice sound g the voice sound m now the third realization that is it when the preceding sound is t or d which we have left in the first part t when preceded by a voiceless sound other than t then d when preceded by a voice sound other than d so it occurs it occurs when the preceding sound is t or d for example wait waited head headed got it so there are verbs with the same form as past tense without any overt marker representing the past tense morpheme for example cut put shut etc they have the same past tense form so that is the zero alamof so these are the variants of past tense morpheme to do it and zero alamof okay these are the alamofic variants of the plural morpheme as well as the past tense morpheme the relationship between morph alamof and morpheme is similar to the relationship between phon alephon and phoneme of course you will be going through it uh, in your second module the term morph literally means shape so any minimal phonetic form that has a meaning is a morph and those morphs which belong to the same morpheme are the allomorphs of that morpheme okay so morph means shape and any minimal phonetic form that has a meaning that is a morph and those morphs which belong to the same morpheme they are the allomorphs of that morpheme so hope you understood this part so keep reading the once again go through it and if you have any doubts you can clear it in our live session thank you